Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, thank you oh so very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. I am the pixelated adaptation of some guy, and I'm here today to overanalyze the Shiva, or Shiva, if you want to mispronounce it. And also I should point out that I'm not going to be overanalyzing the kosher edition. Instead, I'm going to be taking a look at version 1.2 of the Shiva, which just so happens to be Wadget Eyes and Dave Gilbert's very first commercially released game. And note that I said very first commercial game, because prior to the release of the Shiva, Mr. Gilbert had made something of a name for himself in the adventure game studio freeware scene in the early 2000s. Ah, the early 2000s. What a time to be alive. We had Napster. We had dial-up. We had hopes and dreams that had not yet been crushed by cynicism and old age, and oh, I'm just talking about myself now. But getting back on track, I could talk all day about the AGS community at that point in time. And you know what? Maybe one day I will. But to say the least, back in the early 2000s, if you were really into adventure games, then the odds are you had some passing awareness of the vibrant adventure game studio scene. For what was hailed as a dead genre by hacks at the time, and still is, adventure game fans the world over were keeping it alive and well by making adventure games for one another using the freeware AGS game engine. Now for those of you that don't know, the Adventure Game Studio is an amazing little game engine that makes one type of game, and that's retro pixel art a la early 90 style adventure games, and it makes them rather well. So well that the adventure game fans released hundreds upon hundreds of excellent freeware adventure games, and all completely for free. I felt like I had to clarify in case you didn't know what freeware meant. And Mr. Gilbert was one of many that did this, releasing by my count a grand total of seven AGS made adventure games, including the original version of the Shiva. Yes, indeed. The Shiva began its life as an entry in June 2006 monthly adventure game studio competition. And oh, by the way, it won that competition. Then, for whatever reason, Mr. Gilbert decided to jazz up the game and release it commercially. Well, in 2015, that doesn't sound like too crazy of an idea. After all, there's lots of indie developers out there now making adventure games, and a lot of them are using AGS and releasing them commercially. But, you gotta remember, this was 2006, and releasing a commercial game using AGS was a rather bold thing to do. Some would even call it stupid. Yeah, I may have been one of them. But you gotta realize, at the time, the AGS game engine was for the hobbyist, the enthusiast, the adventure game fanatic. It was something to make fun, freeware adventure games with. Most definitely not an engine that you would make a commercial game with. And that's not because it can't make great games. It's just because the AGS engine makes rather outdated kind of games. And I'm not meaning that as a slight against it. I'm speaking about in terms of resolution. In terms of porting in terms of, well, a lot of things. It's just not an optimum commercial engine, to be frank. Basically, the AGS engine made games that could have easily have came out in the early 90s. It was retro as hell, and that's by design. Sure, nowadays retro and indie are practically synonymous, but this is 2006. Which sure, wasn't that long ago, but at the same time, 2006 was a very different world. There were some practical questions that had to be answered if you were to release a game back then. Like for instance, how do you even sell your game? Because to be frank, no publisher is going to publish an AGS game, and there's no Steam Greenlight, or really much of anything in the way of digital distribution at the time. No, if you wanted to go alone, you had to make people buy your game from your website. Now, others had attempted to release commercial AGS games before, the first one being, to my knowledge anyway, The Adventures of Fat Man in 2003, which really didn't make much noise outside of the AGS or diehard adventure game community, and it ended up inevitably becoming freeware after having to run for a while, and oh, wait, now it's for sale on Steam, so yeah, it's gone full circle. But the point still remains, in 2006, you just did not see any commercially released game made with AGS. Hell, you didn't see any retro-style point-and-click adventure games being released at all. But Mr. Gilbert decided to release his game anyway, and he commercially released a Shiva in 2006. And by doing so, and I'm not being cute when I say this, he managed to spark a revolution. Ooh, enough build-up for ya. Well, let's kick off the over-analysis of the Shiva right now. 
Oh, the old vanilla black and white Wajida Games logo. It's really reminiscent of that one Sisters of Mercy album. Ah, it's not a terrible album. A goy came up. Now, what exactly is a goy? I don't know. Anyway, it came up to the rabbi to ask, why do rabbis always answer with a question? To which the rabbi replied, why not? Oh, if rabbis are like this, they must be frustrating to deal with. Well, after that lovely bit of banter, take out your cigarettes, brush off your fedora, and pour yourself some scotch. Cause things are about to get all nowhere up in here. So our hero begins to monologue about the dark Manhattan nights, and how all the stars are lonely in the sky, just like him. And about how he's unsure who he is anymore, and that the world's a dark and topsy-turny kind of place. Whew. That's a lot of nowhere at once, and we haven't even hit the title screen yet. It began as many things do, with a song, just like my birth. What? The artist that drew me was listening to music when they created me. Yeah, I'm gonna take this fedora off and the cigs and everything else, but whatever, let's get to the game. Adonolam. Asher Malach Baterem Ko Yitzir Nivra Lied Nasav Chel Tzoko Atzai Melech Shemo Nikra Hmm, what an angelic voice, and that's also Dave Gilbert's voice. I know. Who knew he had pipes? But our protagonist's icy heart is not melted by the angelic voice of Mr. Gilbert. <coughs> Thank you, Canter Kaplan. Today in my sermon, I'd like to discuss suffering. Oh, what a pleasant and upbeat thing to talk about. Why do bad things happen to good people? Wherever there is pain or oppression or poverty, the question is always the same. How could God let this happen? Is God as good as we think? Can he, in fact, do evil? Whew. Yeah, that's our protagonist right there. Talk about a debit downer. Maybe, on occasion, he even enjoys inflicting pain. Well, that's just one of the most uplifting things I've heard all day. And apparently, the rabbi's had enough with all this rabbi in. And he just gives up in the middle of his sermon. Like, I'm not kidding, he just quits. Probably because he depressed himself so much. I can't do this. I'm sorry. Rabbi? You heard. Huh? What? Yeah, our rabbi's done. We just started the game and our protagonist has given up on his career. Well, that's just lovely. It's over, Josh. You can't mean that. Look, you're a good kid. You've got a good voice and a good future. Especially if you get into making adventure games, I hear they're due for a resurgence. So are done with life, I've given up on everything. The rabbi walks into his office and starts to wax over the philosophical debates that have plagued mankind since the dawn of time. And then someone knocks on his door. I thought I told you to go home. Rabbi Stone, there's someone here. Tell him to get lost. There's no service tonight. No, it's a, a cop. Huh? Yes, indeed, there is a cop waiting for us. A voice by none other than Francisco Gonzalez. Whew, I must be trying to feel all the dos Equis I'm drinking. But anyway, Detective Chainsmoker has something to tell our dear rabbi here. Are you familiar with a Mr. Jack Lauder? Of course he is. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a story to tell. Yeah. What can you tell me about him? He used to belong to this congregation. Used to? But not anymore? No. Left about eight years ago, I think. What's this about? Aren't we building the quintessential Norse story now? The cops show up asking about a long-lost friend. So, you're not aware, Rabbi Stone, that Jack Lauder has been dead for three days. And now that long-lost friend is dead, and we could be suspect number one. Fantastic. So, you and Mr. Lauder weren't close. No, we weren't. What's the deal, Durkin? I've seen Lauder's will. He left you a significant amount of money. Oh, we've just hit the trifecta! Now we got a large sum of money involved. <laughs> Where's my fedora? I don't have the exact amount, but somewhere in excess of 10,000. 
bull. It's the truth. Jack wouldn't give me bubkiss, let alone ten thousand dollars. And why is that, Rabbi Stone? Yeah, the animated donkey and heads are a little bit ropey. He's not supposed to be saying something, yet he's chattering away like he is. This temple's in pretty sad shape, isn't it, Rabbi? Well, you're not blind, that's for sure. Can you afford the repairs? I... Oh, I haven't even begun to talk about one of the key features of this game. Now the Shiva features a telltale style of choose your own narrative component. Basically, you make dialogue choices that slightly change the narrative. However though, if you make the wrong choices or better yet the inappropriate one, you may end up with a game over. And in fact, there are a total of three alternative endings for this game and no, I'm not gonna show you every one. Do I look like I can afford it? I'm just asking. Oh, you're just asking? Well, I'm going to ask you to leave. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Rabbi Stone. Get out of my office. Listen. No, you listen. I know where this is going, and I don't like it. I'm just doing my job. Yeah, you're a real mensch. Get out of here. And the detective is polite enough to acquiesce to our demands. And then our rabbi, well, you yeah, know, he waxes philosophy about his state of affairs. Thinking about, oh, a long lost friend left me money, oh my god, what's all this about? But anyway, we leave the area and Mr. Golden Pipes himself is waiting for us. Wow, rabbi, what was that all about? Well, the game has to establish the driving narrative that's going to lead us to investigate our long-lost friend's murder and why he gave us $10,000. So who was killed? Was it that lauder guy? So who is he? An old member of this congregation. Ah, that's too bad. Yeah, well, it happens to the best of us. Are you going to pay a shiva call? I don't think there will be a shiva, Josh. Why? Hey, stop it, game. We know there's going to be a shiva because it's the title of the game. Shivas are for Jewish families. But I thought he was a member of your temple, and to be a member of a temple, you have to be Jewish. <gasps> Something must have happened between them. So the cantor duly leaves, and once again our rabbi goes into his office and starts debating questions of morality. Why has God suddenly given him 10k? Why is his long-lost friend murdered? Maybe he really should pay a shiva call. Okay, he's gonna pay a shiva call. But he has no idea where his friend lives anymore, so he needs to Google that. Yeah, for real, he's gonna go on his computer and Google his dead friend. And welcome to the game's very first puzzle. Try to remember your login information. Yeah, yeah, that's the puzzle. So you type in R stone, and then you gotta remember the password. Hmm, I wonder what the password could be. We use the password hint, and well, that's not helpful, but oh, wait a minute. We got a little Yiddish dictionary in our inventory. <gasps> the word's there, so we type in the Yiddish word, and oh my god, we're on Jewish AOL. From this page, we can read a bunch of jokes that don't make sense to me, and we can also read a ton of emails that firmly establish that we are a broke rabbi and that we've been given very morbid and depressing sermons every Sabbath. So many that our flock has left because they are tired of hearing about all this sad stuff all the time. But anyway, we have the power of Google, or whatever this search engine is. We find where our dead buddy used to live, and we pay a shiva to the widow. I mean, I get that the widow's grieving, but my god, it takes her forever to get to the door. Mrs. Lauder? Yes? I heard about your husband. I came to... pay my respects. Oh, you knew Jack? And this is where things get kind of tricky, because if you're not careful and you happen to give the wrong reply to this woman, she will call the police on you. Well, after a while, like, you leave and then you keep trying to get in touch with her, and yeah, she inevitably calls the cops on you, and you get blamed for the murder of her husband. So, you have to take a rather diplomatic and kind of direct approach with her in order not to get that game over. And you know what, as someone who's played a lot of adventure games, I really like this. I like the fact that your choices have consequences in this game. Not only does it add a level of realism to this game, but it adds a level of significance to every choice you make. It doesn't feel like you're going through the motions here. It actually feels like what you say has consequences because, well, it actually does have consequences. 
Some time ago, yes. All right, come on in. I'm sorry, you look so familiar, but I can't place your face. What is your name? My name is Rabbi Russell Stone. Your husband used to be a member of my congregation. Oh, I remember now. You have a lot of nerve coming here. Yes, things are off to a bad start already, but we shouldn't be too surprised. After all, the game made it really clear that Jack and the rabbi had a significant falling out, and they hadn't spoken to each other in eight years, so odds are there's some bad blood between the rabbi and Jack's family. Well, I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're sorry, are you? I'm so glad to hear that. Jack would love to hear that you are sorry. He knows already, Mrs. Lauder. Too late, Rabbi. Too late. What do you want? Well, I guess the Rabbi wants to clear his name, but at the same time, he's actually curious as to what happened to his friend. Huh. It's a nice level of intrigue here. It's almost like this game's actually well written. I don't believe this. You threw us out of your temple eight years ago. Maybe this was a bad idea. Maybe you're right, and yet you're here. Why? The police visited me today. Did they? Yes. What did they say? That I'm suspect number one. Really? Well, that would make sense. Well, she is laying it on pretty thick and the plot's been thoroughly explained. Mrs. Lauder, if Jack hated me so much, why did he give me so much money? I... I don't know. This makes no sense. None of it does. Who would kill Jack? He was a good man. Yes, he was. Don't you start. You have no idea. The police have no other leads? Aside from you? No. How did he die? I don't see how that's any of your business. I... well... I suppose I'm curious, and I'd like to... help. Help? Why would you want to help? Well, if he doesn't help, then we wouldn't have much of a rabbi murder mystery game now, would we? I don't know. Maybe I... Oh, we have to be careful here. If we make the wrong choice, it's game over. Maybe I'm looking to make amends for what happened eight years ago. Pfft. Why not? Why shouldn't a rabbi play at being detective? You want to investigate, Rabbi Stone? Be my guest. So now we start the investigation into the murder of our friend who we kicked out of Temple eight years ago for reasons that are not yet fully explained. But silver linings, at least when he died, we got ten grand from him out of nowhere. But how will the investigation go? Where will it take us? Ooh, you want to know, don't you? But you're going to have to wait until part two of the over-analysis of the Shiva version 1.2. Yeah, we ain't kosher in this house. All right, guys, hopefully I'll see you soon. Sa wird schon so